Now, yeah, alright everybody, and welcome to Enshrouded. This here, of course, is the demo version of the game that's available right now over on Steam. I'll be sure to leave a link to that down there in the description. Make sure that you go and check it out for yourself. But today, we're going to be checking it out right now. I'm looking forward to it. But that said, let's take a closer look, shall we? Upon pressing start, we are given the opportunity to create a character. Now, right now, it seems to be mostly defaults. So There's not too many things you can change right now, but it functions for what you need it to be. I'm just going to go ahead and pick this person. You can then choose a hairstyle. There's quite a few that you can choose from. Next, we get to choose our hair color. You can choose facial features like beards and mustaches. And then, of course, the coloration of those. There's also voice lines. <laughs> After all that, you can go ahead and select a character name and begin your journey. Upon starting up the game, we find ourselves in a pod in magical stasis. We've been awakened through some unknown means and without any equipment, so we're going to need to gear up in order to begin our journey. You're going to go through the basics as you move through. They're going to teach you all about the different skills that you have and a little bit of the backstory. It's now time to move into the open world. Fantastic. Keep an eye out for these glowing books as you run through. It'll give you a little bit of backstory about everything that's happened to the world. But we now get a good look at where we are. Look at that. This game actually doesn't look too bad. The stills on Steam do not do it justice. Looks pretty good, this game. Next, you're going to want to keep an eye out for things like bandages and chests that you can loot. Yeah, we got ourselves a torch. One of the cooler things about this game is the ability to break nearly everything. Now, you can pick up of course items off the ground there is of course a ton of chests in each of the locations they have you going to meaning there's hidden items all over the place hidden side paths that you can go down next we need to move through the shroud areas like that one down there as you move through them will begin a five minute countdown if you stay within that area for too long, it will kill you. So you want to make sure that you move through these areas rather rapidly. But be very careful as the enemies there do hit pretty hard. And we've now come to our first fight. Yeah, buddy. Wow. As you can see, the creatures in this game do hurt a whole lot. However... Some of them don't take too much to kill. Luckily, we're with a new weapon now. So, fighting the next set of creatures won't be too terribly difficult. Excellent. Always make sure that you're looting the corpses as well. If you do end up being hurt, make sure that you use your bandages. There are other foods and items like that that can up your HP. And, of course, we have a character screen. Now, we just don't have any other gear, but we did pick up that shield. So, bam, we're holding a rock. Fantastic. After making it all the way through, 
as you can see, there are places where we can respawn throughout the world. And a nice little camp for us to loot. We've now made it to our first quest location where we're going to learn all the basics of building a base. The first thing you're going to need, of course, is a flame altar and a construction hammer. After crafting your flame altar, simply drag it down to your hop bar and go ahead and place it on the ground. Now they give you this nice little overview so you can see how far this reaches and much like V-Rising, you can extend the size of this by upgrading it. Whenever you die, you can come back here as well as when you want to, you can fast travel back to this point. Now this game is very generous where it allows you to build. As you can see, we can go in the middle of this rundown city and just place our altar wherever we want. However, for this quest, they're having us build in a nice open area. So here we are, quest location, bam. And then we're tasked with finding other survivors that were sleeping much like we were. You will of course get plenty of levels as you move through and plenty of loot. So, don't be shy about checking all them side paths. The skills menu is pretty basic for the time being. It looks like a lot of these say like future content and things like that. I'm looking forward to seeing what all they have once the game actually comes out. Now, a lot of these just over on the mage side seem to have very big lack of skills there are of course different ones that you can choose from including sneak attacks double jumps and plenty of movement speed ones ones that increase mana all kinds of stuff so you can build your character however you like some of the unique skills that you're going to get down the line include things like this jump attack which is pretty fun but one of my favorite things is the blink. Instead of a dodge roll, you just sort of teleport all over. It still uses your stamina in order to perform, much like the regular dodge roll. But it looks a little cooler, and I feel like it goes a little bit further too, which is awesome. There is, of course, your typical survival game mechanics, including cooking food. I really like the way they did cooking in this one. You basically sit down at any campfire, select the food that you want to cook, and throw it on a stick. Fantastic. Bam. That is going to come in handy. Now, food in this game acts much like it does in Valheim. Every time you have a piece of food in your belly, it gives you different status effects, such as this meat here will increase our total health if we drink water our total stamina will go up there are also magic ones that you can eat all kinds of good stuff be very careful at night as the shroud does seem to extend in size including the number of creatures that spawn it can get rather nasty out pretty quickly all right, and here we are a little bit further into the game. Not much further, mind you, but we do have some decent armor. And we've picked up a few interesting weapons along the way. There's, of course, a bow that you can use. There's tons of different types of melee weapons. And, of course, magic. One of the cooler things I found in the game is that you can actually alter the terrain. Bam! There's plenty of grenades that will leave nice big old holes in the ground. But you can also use your pickaxe. And this will allow you to get into some pretty cool locations. To get back out, super easy. Just chop you a hole in the ground, make yourself a ladder. Yeah. 
Bam. I love that there's an option to actually alter the terrain in this game. I was not expecting that. You will, of course, need torches whenever you go into dark places. However, you can use your wand, although they only illuminate so far. Usually, torches are your best bet. Check this place out. Looks pretty cool. The dungeons and the visual storytelling stuff that they've done here. A lot of fun. Look at it all. There's bones all over the place. You can destroy all these things if you'd like. Spiders! Get wrecked, spider. Bam. Uh-oh. We've been poisoned. That's okay. Bam! Although, I kind of wish we had an antidote. You're gonna have to be a little bit more careful as we move through. Ah! Ooh! Open! Ha ha ha! Lightbringer. That looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Oh, wow. fantastic. Next, let's go ahead and look at some combat, shall we? There is a lock-on mechanic that you can use. You can jump. You can do a dodge roll to avoid all the creatures if you need to. Very Dark Souls-esque in that respect. You can, of course, lock on to your foes. Chap them up as necessary. If you perfectly time a block, you will actually stun the enemy. Blocking otherwise will give you a little bit of shield, but it will deplete your stamina and then stun you if you're not careful. There you go, parry. Come on, wolf. Yeah, get stunned, buddy. Parry. Yeah, get wrecked. Come on, buddy. But it's not just these weapons that you can use. There's also a bow that we can utilize. Headshots will do some extra damage, which is nice. And you're able to switch between these weapons pretty quickly. Now, for magic, there's the wands that do your basic ranged attacks. Don't really have anything too special with them. But there's also staves, which you can equip magical spells to, which is really cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the magic staves. This one looks really cool. Simply hold it to charge it up. It's much like the bow. Instead of drawing your ammunition, you actually hold the staff to charge it up to prepare a spell. If you hop over to our character sheet, you can equip it into its own ranged slot. I would choose whether you want to use a staff or a bow, honestly, because using both for any reason means that you have to carry a ton of different ammo types. As you can see here, we have a fireball, we have a healing, and we have an ice bolt currently. Now, the healing one is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and take some damage here real quick. As you can see, we've lost a little bit of health, but if you hold in the charge button, you can switch to your healing channel. Each one of these little orbs will heal us by 10, which is awesome, but it does deplete the ammo for the weapon, which is your spells. 
It's kind of nice. It also depletes your mana too, which is it will recharge much like your stamina will over time. There are, of course, he items that will bring your mana back up pretty quickly. But the healing seems to be one of the best benefits of using this weapon over the staff. Unfortunately, it's not going to be very strong unless you've actually put some points into it. As you can see here, I've gone ahead and taken over this structure to be my base. Now, the limitations are pretty nice. We can just build wherever we want. You can, of course, build your own structure as well. For example, one of the things that I really like is that you can build yourself some pieces, set them down, and actually repair buildings that have damaged walls like I've done here. You can see that I've replaced the pillars underneath, but you can also destroy these things as well. Looking over here, of course, you can see these red barrels, and every gamer knows what that means. Boom! Yeah, pretty devastating. So if there's a structure that you want to keep intact, you may want to be careful with that. Once you've uh, taken ownership of a structure, however, they do give you the option of tearing some things down. You can just walk up to an item, boom, it's gone. And they give you all the resources that would be required to build said piece. If we go ahead and make ourselves a hammer, we can then start placing pieces, which is really cool. Super easy to go ahead and build whatever you'd like. They're pretty generous, and the way that the items mesh together is actually really cool. But they give you a lot of options with how you want to build. Bam! Floating stairs for, like, no reason. In order to start making a lot of progression in the game, the first thing you're going to need is to rescue an NPC. Now, once you've rescued them, they do have their own side quests, as well as offering you a ton of new crafting benches, which you can utilize to craft yourself some new gear, as well as upgrade your current benches. There are, of course, a number of really interesting tools you can use, including grappling hooks, which can only really be used in specific spots, but you will need them to progress through certain areas and to reach higher places as well as unlock some interesting items. And then there's, of course, your glider. Now. The glider, I'm not sure if we get a better one later on or not, but you do drop really fastly with the glider, but it will help you get off of really tall structures without taking any damage, which is nice. As you can see, it can be used as an alternative to the grappling hook, although the grappling hook is a lot faster and a lot of fun. With a basic overview of the game out of the way, it's now time to move into the pros and cons of the game. Our first pro is definitely the visuals. Now, I haven't had any issues with hitching or keeping the game, you know, pretty close to 60 FPS, which is great. The game itself looks really good. The enemies are pretty unique. The animations aren't bad at all. The stills of the game do not do it justice whatsoever. Our next pro is definitely the sound design. So as I'm walking through from stone to dirt to grass, they actually have some pretty good footstep sounds. The enemies sound pretty cool, and the weapon animations aren't bad at all. I really like it. 
Our first con in the visuals category is definitely the transition from day to night and from night to day. They are super abrupt. And if you're focusing on the screen pretty hard at night and it switches to daytime, it can be rather blinding. Our last con is definitely in the combat category. Now, I've experienced a couple bugs where I was unable to break a target lock when fighting some enemies. And the other was the arc on the magical wands. Now, some enemies will slowly walk towards you. And as they do, you'll begin firing your magical weapon. And the bullets from these don't just fly straight. Rather, they, when target locked, they fly in an arch down on top of the enemy. And as the enemy was slowly walking towards me, the arch would make it so that way it would miss the enemy entirely, landing behind them. And this would allow low-level enemies to get really close and damage you rather easily. As you can see here, as the creature moves forward, you do in fact miss it because of that arch. When the creature stops moving, it seems to be fine. The other issue is the dodge system. If you're currently in an attack animation or you're locked onto a target, your character inevitably wants to roll forward, causing you to get hit, making it very difficult to get in a proper dodge mechanic. I'm hoping some of these change before the game actually comes out, but I suppose we'll see. With all that said and out the way, how would I rate the game? Well, probably around a 7, 7.5, somewhere in there. The game definitely has some of those early issues that you see in development, and to be fair, I was really kind of meh whenever I started the game. It was did not look great in the trailers, but I've actually had a lot of fun with it. So, with its few flaws, I would actually hope to see some of that change. This is a demo, so I'm sure a lot of it will. Keep that in mind. But yeah, would I recommend the game? Sure. The game's got potential to be something a lot of fun in the future i would definitely recommend however you go out and try out the demo for yourself like i said i'll leave a, a link to the game down in the description go check it out for yourself but until next time thank you everybody for stopping out i greatly appreciate you get down in the description and check you out all those media links likes follows subs all them fun things and then Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Stay healthy out there. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.